Hey everyone, welcome to our next episode of Digging Deeper. And uh, my name is Pastor James, and I'm here with the Chair of Our Elders, Don Defo. And we just heard a message on 2 John, yes. and it was an excellent message. I think we're going to just uh, digest a couple of little pieces from that. Terry's in the sermon called A Fistful of Scripture. There are five one-chapter books in the Bible. Obadiah is the only Old Testament one. Then we have Philemon, 2nd, 3rd John, and Jude. And together, those five form a fistful. That's the idea. And each week, we're going to look at one of those uh, one-chapter books. Yes. So, Don, we were talking a little bit earlier about 2nd John, which is the book Terry preached Mm. on, and how relationships are so essential to that book. Um, Do you want to comment on that? Maybe share a few thoughts on on where you see the relationships between God and others all yeah. sort of colliding in that, in that book? Yeah, it, 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 Second John is definitely a, a book about relationships. And I think that's the thing we have to realize in our Christian faith. Our Christian faith is meant to be a communal type of mm-hmm. faith, a mm-hmm. faith where we relate to each other. And that's really important. That's life-giving. And... Um, this communal nature of of faith in that, is I think sometimes we keep thinking our faith is a personal matter, something between Mm. me and God, but there's really just a private thing. But Mm. there, there's nothing that's really just between me and God, because all that is between me and God um, affects who I am, and then who I am affects in turn affects everybody yeah, it spills I, out, spills out mm-hmm. to everybody I come in contact mm-hmm. with. Very good, so yeah. I think there's um, this relational aspect of our faith is so important and um, mm-hmm. uh, and 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 in turn, who I have relationships with can modify uh, my relationship mm-hmm. and um, uh, so it's really important. Your relationship with God. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, yeah. that. So in the book of uh, Second John, um, there is that clear piece that uh, there's a limit to how much Terry can comment on in a sermon, mm-hmm. but there's a clear piece about warnings. Yes. Which addresses that second uh, exactly. and final comment you just made. Mm-hmm. Our relationship with people can affect our relationship with exactly. God sometimes in negative ways. That's right. And we're to be on guard for that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's why those warnings are in Second John, and they're uh, and uh, as we've spoken before, they're very stern warnings. <laughs> yeah. They're very direct. Yeah. And uh, um, and the thing is, those type of relationships need to be transformed so that we can be transformed. Mm-hmm. If you have these, one of these relationships where someone is being deceptive or um, really discouraging your faith, mm-hmm. then that can really transform yeah. you in, a, in not a good way. Yeah. So. You know, one thing I was thinking about this morning, and, and it's true of 2 John, 3 John, and Philemon, mm. and even Jude, if you look at those four books, um, and as I think about it, Obadiah, But in the early Christian movement, there was a sense that these relationships, if Jesus came and showed us a new way, these relationships had to work. Right. So there was pressure in a healthy way uh, on people to shine with the grace of God Mm -hmm. in their relationships. Yes. In 2 John, that was a combination of love and truth. Mm -hmm. It wasn't all just warm and fuzzies. It was... Also, the community needed to abide by certain things. Exactly. And uh, I think with with Philemon, which who we're going to learn about next next week, uh, Paul is saying, "I'm going to send back the slave that came to see me in Rome and became a Christian. I'm going to send him back, and I need you to receive him back, and mm-hmm. and I want." you to play the play the role of receiving him in grace. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there's a demand on him. It's kind of an interesting thing. Yeah. It, it, you can see how the early Christian movement was shaped by the very person and words of Jesus. Exactly, exactly. And the, and the idea that Terry was getting across, this idea of us being hospitable um, and the idea of hospitality, yeah. I think sometimes we think being hospitable and hospitality is simply opening our homes. Mm-hmm. But I think lots of time it's to be open our hearts mm-hmm. more than our yeah, homes good, yeah. so that we have this uh, 
communication of mm. listening as well as speaking with whoever we are, our neighbors are, that we are to love. And to have that uh, deep, abiding love with God helps us to have an abiding love for our neighbors. And sometimes I think we think it's easier maybe to love people that we don't have a real close relationship with. Oh, we can help them and do whatever. Mm -hmm. But really, when you think about it, some of our neighbors, our own families, yeah. and I, uh, I found even my own life with, uh, with my wife and my children, like sometimes, especially even with children, you can have this l truth and love balance that has mm -hmm. to be in balance. And sometimes we can try as parents emphasizing more truth than love because our kids, we think they may not be doing what we think is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. good. And I think that balance is so important mm -hmm. that we have this love. And, and uh, until we have that open communication with God, that confessional relationship with Him, that deep mm -hmm. abiding relationship, I think it's more difficult for us to have that same relationship with those we're called to love. Yeah. Just wrapping up, Don, let's go into, dive into one little section yes. here, because it has to do with hospitality. Mm -hmm. um, in Second John, I'm going to read from 7 yes. on to um, 11, mm -hmm. because there's a, there's, there's a strict warning given Very to, strict. Uh, to people who are in that early church setting. I say this, John speaking, he's speaking to um, the church, uh, it's what Terry, the chosen lady and her children, mm -hmm. which may be a, just a metaphor for a church and mm -hmm. those who attend it. Um, I say this because many deceivers have gone out into the world. They deny that Jesus came in a real body. Such a person is a deceiver and an antichrist. Mm. That's the severe language Very we were strong. talking about. Watch out that you don't lose what we've worked so hard to achieve. Be diligent so you receive your full reward. Anyone who wanders away from this teaching, referring back to Jesus came in a real body, anyone who wanders mm -hmm. from this teaching has no relationship with God, but anyone who remains in the teaching of Christ has a relationship with both the Father and the Son. And then it warns, if anyone comes to your meeting and doesn't teach the truth about Christ, don't invite that person into your home or give them any kind of encouragement. Anyone who encourages such people becomes a partner in their evil work. And I remember when I was growing up as a young Christian, uh, some people thought that referred to even letting people who canvassed from other religions coming mm. to your door, say the JWs or yes. the Mormons, that referred to not letting them in your house. But the context I think here is is different, and it's worth just, because I think many people will be reading this book yes. this week. The context here is, one of itinerant preachers, wandering preachers who were coming around at the time, mm -hmm. and there were no Hiltons or Hampton Inns or Holiday, Holiday Inns anywhere along the way. So as they wandered from place to place, they depended upon the hospitality yes. of early churches to find a place to uh, eat and um, even be supported uh, some. Here, the Apostle John is saying, if people come with the wrong teaching, don't give them the microphone. Mm -hmm. Don't allow them to, to fool your community into believing the wrong things. Mm -hmm. Guard that. Yes. So it's not really about opening your heart or your home. It's more, in this case, about being very wise about um, making sure the people who are teaching are teaching the oh, truth yes. about Jesus. For sure. Yeah. Anything you want to say about that? Well, just the relationships you have with others, though, this uh, idea of truth being able to share the truth in, in love, um, but also realizing that some people don't share your truth. Um, mm -hmm. You're to love them, but not embrace the truth that they want to share with you, which doesn't line up mm -hmm. with Christ. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. I think that's really important. Yeah. Because the interesting thing is, when we get to 3 John, the yes. emphasis is going to switch, and John is going to say, can you make sure you take these people in and support them? Yes. So it's a complete flip mm -hmm. from Second John, um, yeah. reading in Third John, mm -hmm. uh, 
these people are traveling for the Lord. They accept nothing from people who are not believers. So we ourselves should support them so we can be their partners as they teach the truth. That's verses 7 and 8 in 3 John. So here he's referring to teachers who are faithful coming right. and making sure they receive them well. Mm-hmm. Anyway, there's a little something about um, the world of, of the Apostle John, traveling preachers. I think that means that you can speak to people who have different beliefs than you. Mm-hmm. You can even have them in for a cup of tea. This refers more to giving them a microphone and letting them speak to your congregation yes. about something that would not be uh, understood as orthodox and true. Yeah. And and really, when you, you look at this whole balance of truth and love, going back to 1 John, where John starts off, the message you've heard from the beginning that we should love one another— mm-hmm. And talk about being severe, he says in verse 14 of 1 John 3, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love one another. Mm-hmm. Whoever does not love abides in death. So our key in keeping this truth and love in balance mm-hmm. is so important. Yeah. We are to, to love with the truth. That's really good. Brings it right back to relationships. Yes. And the demand on the Christian, not out of obligation or legalism, no. but out of a transformed life to, exactly. life to love those around them. Do you want to wrap up in prayer and then we'll let the small groups take sure. off with the questions? Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your love for us. And Lord, as we seek to have that open and confident relationship with you, Father, that deep abiding love that you have for us that we can share with you, Oh, Lord, we just pray that you'd help us to have the right balance of love and truth and to look to our neighbors who are even members of our own family, that we would show the grace and love uh, to them balanced with the truth of what we read in your word. And Lord, keep help us to keep that in balance, Father, and, uh, uh, and just be good apprentices of you in all of this. In the precious name of Jesus, we ask this. Amen. Have a great study, everyone. Thank you.